The CDC says the number of people who died due to drug overdoses in 2017 reached a new high. Most recent CDC data shows that more than 70,000 people died of overdoses in the U.S. last year. That's actually more than the all-time peaks for car crashes, HIV, gun deaths as well. And at least 28,000 of those deaths involved fentanyl or similar drugs. But while fatal overdoses continue to rise nationwide, one city... Dayton, Ohio, has seen its numbers drop by 50 percent over the past year. Abby Goodna visited Dayton. She's a health reporter for The New York Times and joins us now. Abby, I got to say, this reporting was just so fascinating to us. What was it that Dayton, Ohio, was able to do to combat drug overdoses that really made a transformation? Well, I guess the bottom line answer is that nobody really knows for sure what is causing or what has caused this drop, this pretty significant drop in Dayton over the past year. But we do know that Dayton really got hammered for a couple years in a row now. 2017 was a terrible year in Dayton. And so they really mobilized and started trying what they're calling, what people call harm reduction tools. Everything from medication, assisted treatment for opioid addiction, which they're able to get to many more people now because of the Medicaid expansion there, to um, naloxone or Narcan to revive people who have overdosed. They're making sure that's as widespread as possible. Um, and to helping people once they get through treatment to stay sober, to stay healthy with recovery supports, people who they can talk to, groups they can be part of, et cetera. Yeah. Um, and another factor for Dayton may just be that the drug supply, for whatever reason, became somewhat less lethal this year. You know, it's interesting, Abby, you also know, and this, this kind of surprises us a little bit, that, you know, cops and public health officials, they often disagree when it comes to how you tackle the opioid epidemic. But that, for some reason, doesn't seem yep. to be a problem in Dayton. Why is that? How would they work together? That was a really striking piece of the reporting in Dayton to see that the, you do often see that law enforcement really disagree with public health people about how to address addiction and, and and, you know, face it head on. And in this case, the police chief, um, Richard Beale in Dayton, he really agreed and was fully on board with the public health plan and strategies for dealing with it. He made sure all his officers have had naloxone or Narcan now. They carry it with them for uh, several years now. Um, he supported having a couple needle exchanges, syringe exchanges in Dayton, where people who are still injecting drugs can get clean needles to reduce their risk of death. Um, he supports uh, the use of medication-assisted treatment. Dayton mm -hmm. hasn't done any, everything they could do, um, like ma making sure there's widespread use of medication treatment in jails, for example. Mm -hmm. But this police chief and this public health group have, have really agreed on a bunch of solutions here. And one of the deadliest opioids is called carfentanil. Um, you talk about that epidemic there. And can you explain exactly what it is? And how is Dayton fighting against drugs like that? So one of the problems with fentanyl, the synthetic fentanyl that's coming from China or from Mexico or through the mail or whatever, is it's, it, it, it's the way it's made now in labs is there are many different fentanyl analogs, too, that are really similar, similar drugs that might differ by a couple or even one ingredient. Carfentanil is one of those. It's, it's used as an elephant tranquilizer. It's, it's incredibly powerful. And it ended up uh, showing up in the mix of street drugs in Dayton last year. And uh, in Ohio in general, Ohio got really hard hit by carfentanil. Nobody knows why, again, but um, it's an incredibly powerful drug that wiped out a whole bunch of lives in Dayton and other parts of Ohio last year. And for some reason, it's not as frequently showing up this year there. Mm. You know, we were, you mentioned earlier about Medicaid and how Governor Kasich expanded that and the importance of that. But, you know, you also cite here um, Dayton's mayor who said nothing has had a bigger impact on overdose deaths than Ohio Governor John Kasich's expansion of Medicare. How exactly does this Medicaid, excuse me, Medicaid, how exactly does the Medicaid expansion help fight against the opioid epidemic? Well, what it does is provide health insurance, free health insurance provided by the government to uh, many more low-income people, um, and adults especially, who were the, the ones who were most left out of uh, government health insurance in the past. So we're talking almost 700,000 people in Ohio gained access to health insurance through Medicaid under the expansion that Kasich 
pushed for. Um, and uh, the mayor of Dayton could not feel any more strong about this, that Medicaid expansion and the access then the people had to see, to go to treatment centers, to get treatment from their primary care doctors who they might have for the first time, or um, whatever kind of treatment they were getting. It just made it so much easier for them because they didn't have to pay for it. And many more treatment centers came into Dayton and to Ohio as a result of that expansion as well, knowing that they would have a lot more business there. So, Abby, you've been knee deep in all this research. You've been in this town. You've, you've really followed this. What do you say to mayors of other cities who look at Dayton? How do they take the blueprints of what happened at Dayton to help bring down drug overdoses in their town? I think um, probably the most important thing they can do, and no promises here because we see other cities like Baltimore that are doing a good job with harm reduction tools and still seeing a rise in their overdose deaths. But the most important thing I would say would be for public health officials and police to agree um, on ways of fighting it and to for the for the law enforcement to work with public health um, on harm reduction, which research proves that a lot of these tools really do reduce the death count and the overdose count. Abby Goodna, fascinating reporting, a glimmer of hope in the opioid epidemic. Thank you so much for your reporting, Abby. Thank you.